Throughout my decades of being a wrestling fan, I certainly have seen some seismic shifts in a lot of things involving the business, and one of them certainly involves wrestling fans. Like, people come into wrestling as fans, and they leave wrestling as fans. They outgrow it, or it's not for them anymore. They got other things going on in their lives. Skip de skip and whoop de woo But certainly I've seen over the decades, to the business's detriment, I think beyond question, that... It used to be about personalities and stars and characters and moments and getting as much mainstream attention as possible to now more and more it's screw how many eyeballs you get on it. Focus on the ever dwindling number of eyeballs that you have and just only cater and appeal to them and focus on the moves and the matches and the mark mindset, and again, clearly, to the business's overall detriment, at least here in the U.S., in terms of influence, in terms of scope, in terms of following, in terms of product and brand awareness. I don't think that could be disputed. So, it certainly makes sense, whenever possible, when a company, whether it's an AEW or a WWE, wants to go outside of the wrestling bubble to bring somebody in, you know, that they would want to do that. Why would you not? Why would you not want to potentially get more eyeballs on your product? If anything, the interactions over the years, even the decade or so doing this on YouTube and on Twitter, etc., has taught me that for a lot of these fans that will talk about what they would do if they were in charge or how they would book, it's a, it's a perfect reminder of exactly why the hell they should stay fans. They always have been fans. And they're not the type of marks that we need in the business because, frankly, we've got enough of them in the business already just like them. Because they don't care about that stuff. They care about catering to just their needs and refuse to or don't want to or can't see the bigger picture. Which brings me to the whole business of the WWE and what they're doing currently with Bad Bunny. And I'm seeing people complaining online about, who's this Bad Bunny guy? He's a nobody. Who's this Bad Bunny dude? I don't even understand what the hell his music is saying. Who's this Bad Bunny dude? We don't need no stupid celebrities involved. We want thrastlings and all of this pissing and moaning and complaining about this. And let's be absolutely clear. That's stupid. Not only is WWE smart for trying to involve a bad bunny, they should continue to do so and he should absolutely have a match at WrestleMania if that's what the card calls for, if that's what the momentum calls for, if that's what the plans call for. And to assert anything other than that is selfish stupidity. Flat out. Think about the WWE over the years and some of the major notable celebrities that had a huge impact on the company and the business that still resonates to some degree to this day. You got to talk about Cindy Lauper and Mr. T and the whole road to WrestleMania 1. Like the whole rock and wrestling connection and you're doing it on the back of Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania. Like that company launched to the stratosphere because of the involvement of these celebrities. You know, and throughout the years, you would bring in people for the big shows like WrestleMania. You'd bring in a Bob Euchre, and you'd bring in a Regis Philbin and a Leslie Nielsen. You would have Lawrence Taylor wrestle in a main event of WrestleMania against a Bam Bam Bigelow. You would do all of that. Mike Tyson and the whole build-up to WrestleMania 14. Like, you talk about the history of the WWF slash E. Beyond question, the two hottest eras in that company's history, in no small part, oh, that happening, that growth, that success, that boom in popularity to celebrity mainstream involvement. How many millions of additional eyeballs 
got onto Vince McMahon's WWF product in the 80s because of Cindy Lauper and Mr. T. Nobody disputes that. In the late 90s, at a time where WWF was, you know, starting to kind of piece it together, but they really needed something to help kind of shift the landscape. It wasn't the only thing. There was obviously a lot of factors at play, but it certainly didn't hurt that one of the most well-known athletes on the planet, a couple of years removed from his prison sentence, his time served, controversial athlete, all of that, the baddest man on the planet, Mike Tyson. I can certainly helped significantly associating him with Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Attitude Era was born. And now we get to 2020, 2021 at a time where, yes, on the one hand, the WWE is doing great business from a revenue standpoint. Every time you turn around, they seem to be getting some billion dollar deal, whether it's from, from USA Network for Raw, whether it's from the Fox folks for SmackDown, whether it's from the Peacock TV folks for the WWE Network. That's all great, fine, and good. But when you talk about actual relevancy here in the U.S., in terms of mainstream exposure, etc., it's arguably at an all-time low. You have fewer people watching than ever. This weird kind of dichotomy of revenues higher than ever, interest exposure audience lower than ever. And eventually at some point in time, those are going to balance out and it's not going to be good. Seems like we keep, keep kicking the can down the road, but eventually those chickens will come home to roost. And the WWE knows that. They absolutely know that. So it makes sense to try and bring in other eyeballs whenever you possibly can. And you can do that in a variety of ways. Like way before he was a pumpkin president, like Donald Trump brought eyeballs to the product. There was no question about that. And that whole build up to WrestleMania 23, like that went everywhere on the news. Like that was national cable news, prime time, network national news, all of that. Like you can't pay for that type of advertising, marketing, and promotion. And nor do you have to. Because when you bring in folks like that, it helps sell itself. You can think whatever you want about him as a president because he deserves it, that clown. But when it comes to wrestling, there's no question it had an impact. There's no question it got more eyeballs on the product. It got more people awareness to WWE. Whether that meant that it did anything long-term to move the needle, that's a different story, I grant you. But when you look at these guys and you look at the impact that they have, the eyeballs that you can bring in, why would you not go to somebody like a Bad Bunny? You're saying, who's a Bad Bunny? It's one of the highest streamed art, um, artists, excuse me, in the entire world. When you think about musical artists, he's obviously huge in the Latin community. He's just huge in general. And his streaming numbers are up there with Drake, I believe, surpassed Drake even. Like, that's a pretty big effing deal. He's higher than Aubrey, for God's sakes. Like, that's not nothing. So you're talking about you could bring in somebody for a company that really struggles to be relevant with modern pop culture, which is very hard to understand in a lot of ways, believe me, especially when you talk about the internet world and how everything could constantly change from one moment to the next. You could bring in somebody that's incredibly hot, incredibly relevant in the here and now, leveraging their social media platforms, leveraging what they've done. This artist has done a song about one of your legends and Hall of Famers, Booker T. Why in the fuck wouldn't you bring him in? Now I understand, like, not every celebrity appearance provides value. Not every celebrity appearance is great. For every Bob Barker you got as a guest host of Raw over the years, you got a freaking Al Sharpton. Some care, some don't. And you want them to care and pretend like they're invested. Be happy to be there. Like, appreciate it for the opportunity that they've got. And this dude, Bad Bunny, seems to do so. As far as whether or not you understand their music or not, or his music or not, I don't either. Doesn't mean that I need to be old man yelling at the clouds in a wet blanket on everybody's parade for this. Because I'm able to see the vision. I'm able to see the bigger picture. It is not that hard. 
if he brings in a couple hundred thousand additional eyeballs of interest over the next couple of months or potentially a couple of million via TV, via internet and social media platforms, then what the fuck is wrong with that? Isn't that the name of the game? Number one goal of the program, let's be clear, is to not get a seven star match rating from Mark Meltzer Magoo. The number one goal of the program is to make money and as much money as you possibly can. Because the reality of our modern business world is he who sh or she, excuse me, we have to be correct here, he or she that has the most toys wins. And in order to get the most toys, you got to make the most chop. And if a guy like Bad Bunny, who you invest X number of dollars in, provides you Y in additional revenue, then it is worth it 100 out of 100 times. And especially when you're talking about aligning him with somebody like a Damian Priest, I've talked about before, that's a guy I look at that says, to me, should be a big four pay-per-view opponent for somebody like Roman Reigns. That's somebody you should be behind. That's somebody that you should be building up. So putting a Bad Bunny aligned with somebody like a Damian Priest makes a world of sense as well because you're investing somebody like Bad Bunny in his audience and his exposure to somebody that you're trying to introduce to a larger audience away from NXT to a guy that you are trying to get over, that you are trying to make a big deal, that you're trying to build up to one of those top spots and he has the ability to carry that off, then why in the hell wouldn't you do it? And even when you look ahead to Mania, it's going to be a two-night show. You've got time to fill. Not every match needs to be Vanilla Ass 1 versus Vanilla Ass 2 in a flippy, fucky, pop the nerds match. I don't care how many flaming shards of ass glass they go fly and throw. Like, if he didn't care, or he was totally lame, or he was somebody that wasn't really that big of a deal, I get it. And let's be clear, I don't know a bunch about the dude, but when I see the social media following that he has, when I see the streaming numbers that he has, that's just more of me not being able to keep up with the times and understanding everything that's a big deal in the current here and now moment. That doesn't mean, because I'm not that familiar, it doesn't mean that he's not a big freaking deal. You get that? Like he has the numbers to substantiate that this dude is a pretty big deal. So why in the hell would you not want him to be involved? Why in the hell would you sit there, gripe, moan, piss, bitch, and complain about it? Why in the hell would you begrudge WWE for wanting to do business with him? It's just like Shaq with AEW. Who gives a shit about your stupid matches? Here's a guy that you can bring in that is a much, 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 much more well-known, significantly well-known household name and figure, even more relevant in pop culture than all of your talents on your roster combined. Of course, they're going to want to do business with somebody that also works for the same network TNT that AEW Dynamite appears on. Duh! That makes too much fucking sense in a guy and a guy like Shaq actually wants to be there, wants to be involved. So why in the hell wouldn't you? Exactly. I don't want to see the match. Good, who gives a shit? It's not about you. It's about trying to get bigger. It's about trying to grow your audience. You're the type of person, when you say that, it doesn't matter. You'll still be around afterwards. So plug your nose, cover your eyes, cover your ears, and shut the hell up. Seriously, this old bad bunny thing may not do much in the grand scheme of things. And it could be potentially a short-term boon for business and that's it. But you can't tell me, you cannot tell me that if you were in Vince's position that you wouldn't be trying to do the same damn thing. Now, of course, Vince probably thought this was literally going to be a dude coming in in a bunny suit and he was going to sit there and kick the tires on the gobbledygooker and had give him a run. <laughs> Main event might want a WrestleMania, but, well, damn, pal, I guess it's just your name. What the hell is a bad bunny? I, I wish we could have seen that. That's worth a pay-per-view trying to explain the times to Vince. But shit, man. 
You want all the exposure you can get. If Bad Bunny gives you more of that and having him have a match at Mania helps that show and helps elevate Damian Priest, then that's what the fuck you do, period.